We're moving on to millennials, both first and second wave. We hear them called boomlets or Nintendo generation or the Internet generation. And basically, this is a group that grew up on technology and digital uh, digital competencies, if you will. Um, some of the most important events uh, in millennials' lives were Oklahoma City bombing. That happened um, early 90s. I don't remember the exact date. Columbine shootings, high school shootings, school shootings. This is a common theme. These are kids that have had to do duck and cover drills for, um, you know, shooter shooter preparation. Um, World Trade Center bombing, the first one in the, in the 90s, and as well as the second one, obviously, that happened in 2001. My daughter actually remembers um my daughter remembers uh, 9-11. She was four and a half at the time, but clearly remembers it um, because I wasn't home <laughs> and they didn't know when I was coming home. And we lived in New York, so it was hard to not know it, um, unfortunately, um, for those of us that lived in the area. Um, corporate scandals like Enron and WorldCom, and these are all about the ethics and ethical violations. It was a huge uh Huge overflow of these sorts of things. Um, Gulf Wars, um, Hurricane Katrina and the lack of responsiveness by the government on Hurricane Katrina, um, at least in an appropriate manner. Most of these kids had their first computers at a very young age. They were playing games on them very quickly and they were kept busy. Right. Because these are people who were probably latchkey parents who uh you know, they were not allowed to go out and do things. So their parents got them involved in stuff. Right. Uh, I'm going to take you here and we're going to go here. You're going to be in this sport and that thing. And the whole idea that everybody had to be involved in some sort of sport or activity and constantly programmed rather than letting kids sit and get bored and learn how to entertain themselves. Um, and I'm guilty of that myself, obviously, for many reasons. But um, uh the, the notion of the soccer mom became a big issue right now. The parents that were toting their kids in minivans all over the place, getting them to where they needed to go. Um, and those were the kids that were being toted around and, and being pushed into different kinds of activities. So this, this first and second wave were all about that. Millennials are different from the generations before them in that they had much more of an egalitarian relationship with the adults in their life. Because there were fewer kids per parents, parents were much more uh, engaged with their parents in some ways than they were in the past. The, the notion of the authoritarian parent um, who was aloof and separated from their children and had gone and gone away. And I'm not saying that I think the egalitarian relationship with adults was a good thing. But my daughter was an only child for five years, and so the only people she hung out with and interacted with were adults. Um, yes, she was in daycare, but, um, you know, she, she had a lot of adult attention in her life and, you know, thought of herself as kind of an equal. Um, and, and we needed to obviously teach her that as a child, while I encourage her to speak up and to speak her mind, she is not the same as an adult. And now she is an adult, but at the time that was a that was a difficult thing to teach her because of the kids around her and the way that they were being the messages that they got, right? Um, they were very comfortable with multiculturalism, uh, different races, sexes, uh, sexual orientations. Multiculturalism was something that they didn't even think about it. They were, it was just a big part of their life growing up and it wasn't something that they concerned them. Um, they were very goal and achievement oriented because obviously all the multi heavy duty programming was a, was a big part of their lives growing up. Um, but they also started to develop very strong social concerns and responsibilities, perhaps in, pa in part because their boomer grandparents who were engaged in those kinds of activities sort of passed on some of that uh, wisdom, if you will, about being careful about your environment and, and caring about these sorts of things. Um, social media and the Internet were their technology, um, getting out there and sharing things on social media. Um, you know, is it good to share everything? Probably not. And I'm sure many of these folks have then have since learned that sharing everything on the Internet is probably not a good place to be. But it was fun and unique and exciting and, and everything was sort of out there for people to feel connected to others in a way that they hadn't before. Um, and some of those compelling messages that happened to those who were uh, millennials were you're special. They were the everybody plays, everybody wins generation. No one gets left behind. Um, and 
while there that has a lot of uh, good value to it, on the other hand, some of the challenges that happened is that kids didn't learn how to compete um, because they they just figured, well, I don't have to work hard because everybody's going to get a trophy and I'll be okay. Um, and so there were kids that did um, not understand that you know the real world requires some competition and the real world is going to be kind of challenging for us out there. Um, they are connected 24 seven and not in an unhealthy way, but that, you know, their phone is always there. Um, uh, they're, they always know that they could at a moment reach out to people all over the world, play their games online, all those sorts of things. Um, so they were connected 24 seven, but the unhealthy level of, of connection 24 seven is when you make yourself available for work 24 seven. That's the, the 24 seven that, that is more concerning for me, but, being able to connect at any point in time and not be restricted by time zones, but being able to work asynchronously with other people in collaboration is, is pretty stinking cool. Um, they're all about achievement, obviously, because that's the message that was drilled into them uh, growing up and also about service to the community, again, because of those social concerns and responsibilities, giving back, caring about the environment, caring about, you know, animal welfare, caring about nuclear bombs and those sorts of things. Um, all very important part of millennial upbringing. And lastly, we come to Gen Z. They are considered true digital natives. They've been online their whole lives. They've been given digital tools since they were little. Um, and there are a lot of important events that have gone on in their life. Number one, that 2008 housing crisis and economic collapse. Uh, iPhones and the advent of these smartphones that can do everything for us. Seeing the first black president, which to them may not seem weird or uncommon at all, but it was a huge thing in 2008 to watch Barack Obama get elected. And climate change is a big issue for them. The Donald Trump presidency and its impact on people and perceptions of, of leadership was also really important. The Me Too movement is out there expecting people, rec recognizing that people have had experiences and that it's not shameful to, to, to share those events and that we should stand up and use our voice to say, me too, I've been hurt, I've been harmed. And so these are things that have pushed this generation to speak up than when things bother them. Uh, the Black Lives Matter, Matter movement was also huge, is also huge to them. Um, and that, that COVID pandemic certainly frames how all of them went to school, um, are navigating their education, navigating their interaction with others. There's still a lot to be learned about Gen Z. This is uh, stuff that, that we know at the surface is a, is a big issue. Um, and and it'll, time will tell you know, what is going to be uh, the big thing for this generation. Definitely it's social media, um, but beyond things like Facebook, they're into things like Reddit and online gaming um, in, a, in a way that previous generations are not, um, but it's important to identify. Just as each generation has had different technological um, uh, impact and influencers on them and just as different generations had different messages that they needed to absorb and understand and reflect on, they have different preferences in terms of the way communication occurs. So our traditionalists love the handwritten note, sending cards and letters and notes out to people um, because that was really what they grew up on and what they learned. Um, so those traditional ways of communicating are still very important to them. Boomers prefer phone and personal interaction. Um, they like to talk face to face to people or they're happy to work on the phone with somebody. Gen X is all about the email and the voicemail. Like I'll leave you a message or I'll send you an email. No big deal. Um, face to face. Um, I'm certainly capable of doing face to face interaction, but I also recognize if we're not in the same space, it's a lot easier to send me to send you an email for me to send you an email than it is for me to seek you out. Um, in a, in a face to face inter interaction. Millennials like quick, Get the uh, messages through blogs or IMs or text messages or DMs, direct messaging. And Gen Z is actually kind of a shift back to the basics. They do like face-to-face -face communication, but they also like social media too. So putting themselves out there and communicating via social media what they're interested in and how they see the world. Um, so that's out there as well. And um, so 
in workforces where we have different generations, you might have senior people that would like you to walk into their office to talk to them, whereas, you know, the Gen Z or millennials are like, I'll just message you, you know, or the Gen Xers are like, yeah, I'll send you an email. Um, so people are not being disrespectful because they are using text messages or social media or emails. They are just communicating in a different manner. And I think that's the challenge that these older generations need to see, right, is that the newer generations are just using the technology that's in front of them that they use and they're used to using as compared to older generations that um, didn't have the use of that technology. And so they, they tend to depend on more low-tech ways of communicating in, in, in many ways. So be aware of that as you're interacting with people. If you've got younger folks underneath you, they like a certain way of communicating, communicate with them that way. If you've got older folks that are in, you know, working with you, they like the face-to-face -face visit, but you sending them an IM is not going to make them happy. But actually sitting down and having a conversation will probably satisfy them more than anything else. Um, and so, you know, be aware of this. Knowing what we know now about all these different generations, what are the managerial don'ts? Like if you're going to be managing a workforce that may have traditionalists reporting to you, and that can happen, um, as well as Gen Zs, what shouldn't we do? Um, with traditionalists, they don't like that touchy-feely stuff. Like they don't want to talk about their feelings. They, they, they don't want you to be indecisive. Like make a decision and stick with it. Um, they're not into trendy things, and they like you to be very organized and direct in the way that you do stuff. So be mindful of that. They also like you to come in and write them a note or talk to them face-to-face. -face. They much prefer that as a, as a form of communication. With boomers, they hate bureaucracy. They're the ones that busted down bureaucracy. Um, they want to make sure you hear them and that you are respect their input. Um, they uh, Don't be brusque. Don't be rude. Don't be disinterested because they, what matters to them, their jobs matter to them so deeply that they want you to understand their passion for things. Boomers, um, oh, Gen X rather, um, hate being micromanaged because they like autonomy. They value autonomy because they've been autonomous since they were young children. Um, they want you to not be hypocritical. Like to me, that's my, that is my, that's my uh, uh, hot button topic for me. If you're a hypocrite, I struggle with that because you don't get to tell me one thing and then do something else. You've got to be consistent in the way you approach things. And maybe that's why I went into HR, because consistency is the way to do it. Um, but they don't want you to be a hypocrite and to not practice what you preach. If you're saying, I need, you know, you need to do this, you, then they expect you to do it as well. Um, they want to make sure that you focus on results and making sure that sometimes it doesn't matter what the process is about. It's, um, it's about the results. And they don't like schmoozing. Why? Because they were latchkey kids. They were isolated and they worked in their homes and they worked on it independently. So they're not schmoozers. They don't like to shake hands and schmooze in an environment. They like actually going out and, um, as a rule, um, you know, and just getting the work done and having their results valued uh, in that manner. With millennials, they don't like sarcasm or cynicism, which, of course, creates the problem with their parental Gen X uh, folks um, that, that, that fight between, you know, uh, the Gen X and the millennials, which is, you know, we're all about cynicism in the Gen X generation, and the millennials are like, yeah, we don't like cynicism. But you can see how every generation is combating what their parents did the generation before. Um, millennials don't like to be considered they are too young to do anything. And the boomers forget that because the boomers had the same problem with the traditionalists, that they wanted to be taken seriously. They wanted a space. They wanted their voice heard. Um, but they're doing the exact same thing to the millennials by telling them they're too young. They don't understand. They're this, they're that. Um, don't be threatened by new technologies or, um, uh, you know, that are out there because technology is your friend. You can make it, use it to your advantage. Don't be condescending. Don't be inconsistent and don't be disorganized. And the good news is they got some of that, con the, the need for consistency um, from the Gen X generation because consistency is important to Gen X as well, uh, particularly in terms of practicing what you preach. 
Lastly, Gen X is like, don't forget workers, don't forget to coach them to success because they need support. They're, they're not going to be able to figure it out on their own. Um, they, they like rigid schedules because that's what they grew up with. So Gen Z really wants us to make sure that we are giving them structure. Um, they need probably more than other generations have and more than Gen X needed. So we need to be thinking about that as well. So um, those are the, the don'ts um, of uh, management. At the end of the day, what remains the same when it comes to generations? Well, the life cycle, right? Every generation thinks the one behind them is lazy, unfocused, doesn't share their values, is inexperienced, and they don't like their music or their hair or their clothes. You know, boomers did that to the Gen Xs. Gen Xs do that to the millennials. Millennials are doing that to their, um, you know, their Gen Z uh, siblings there. So every generation is influenced by the generation before, and every generation thinks the ones behind them are not nearly as good as they are. But they kind of forget where they were you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago that things changed. Um, the most important thing in a, in a multi-generational workforce is to do bi-directional mentoring. There are times when older workers have lots of skills and abilities and knowledge that they should be sharing with those younger than them, vice versa. You can match up those people, teaching them how to use technology and, and, and helping the older workers who might be resistant to some of these new trends getting them on board and being mentored upwards in that manner. I was able to finally teach my mom how to do text messages. She resisted it for years, but then she realized that's really the only way many of us communicate with each other. So we had to get her on board with that. So we sat down, we gave her the tools, we taught her how to do it. We showed her how to press the buttons to do a search, a Google search on her iPad. And she couldn't be happier because now she could access the things that she was dependent on us to do before. So bi-directional um, uh, mentoring is a really great way to help generations work together, understand each other, um, and to work together more collaboratively.